Evan Almighty. Is this spin-off sequel to Bruce Almighty really that bad? Or should I give this film some good old-fashioned Big D justice? I think that's what I'm going to do. Here's my review of Evan Almighty. Big D's Entertainment Rankings and Reviews. So greetings, my fellow YouTubers, and welcome to Big D's Entertainment Rankings and Reviews. My name is Duol, better known to you as the Big D, and this time around, I bring to you a review of the 2007 comedy flick, Evan All Night, released by Universal, along with Spyglass Entertainment, plus Relativity Media, original film, and Shady Acres Entertainment. <laughs> The film is a spin-off sequel to Bruce Almighty, which came out four years before. The film was directed by Tom Shadyak, who also helmed that film, written by Steve Kirk, based on the characters created by Steve Corrin and Mark O'Keefe from the original film. <clears throat> now, the film stars Steve Corell as the titular character returning as Evan Baxter and Morgan Freeman as God. Along with Lauren Graham, John Goodman, John Michael Higgins, Jimmy Bennett, and Wanda Sykes. Now, the film is a modern-day retelling of Noah's Ark, which Evan reluctantly reenacts because God commands him to do so at the same time when Evan pursues a new career in government. Anyway... Well, as this film had completed production, it became the most expensive comedy ever, later being overtaken by Man Black 3. While this film was factually considered a bomb, but it did okay and what have you, but didn't do great though. Yeah, but anyway, I'm just going to say... Then I'm going to go ahead and give you the story anyway. Newly elected to Congress, former local television news reporter Evan Baxter leaves his hometown of Buffalo and later moves to the community of Prestige Crest, located in the fictional town of Huntsville, Virginia, where his congressional campaign officially declares that he will change the world. Evan prays to God that, to give him this opportunity. His wife, Joan, also prays that she Evan, their, and their three sons will be closer to Gary as a family. On his first day of Congress, Evan receives a letter from his greedy boss, Congressman Chuck Long, who provides him with a prime office and gives the opportunity to join him as the junior co-sponsor of, well, to his integration of Public Lands Act, or SIM plan bill. Or the next old days, strange events in Evan's life occur. Eight vacant lots in Prestige Crest are purchased under his name, and ancient tools and gopher wood are delivered there. Pairs of animals start following him around everywhere he goes, with birds flying to his office through the window. He begins to grow a beard, which grows back whenever he shaves every morning. His hair grows uncontrollably, his clothes are replaced to robes. And the number 614 starts appearing in various forms throughout his daily routine. Evan comes to realize that 614 actually refers to verse 14 in chapter 6 of the book of Genesis, where God instructs Noah to build an ark in preparation for a coming flood. Although Evan initially rejects the idea, God himself starts appearing to Evan and assures him that a flood will come, and the only way he can change the world will be through building the ark. Evan decides to start building the ark with the tools and materials provided, giving him an opportunity to get closer to his sons, although Jones sees this as a midlife crisis. Although Evan still maintains his career in Congress, his appearance alienates his street staffers, and the animals that follow him everywhere become disruptive. God reappears to Evan and provides him a robe, and later warns him the flood will likely come midday on September 22nd. When God indefinitely exposes Evan's robe, Long fires him from Congress, and he has his name removed from the Public Land Act bill. And if that wasn't enough, believing that Evan's gone insane, Joan leaves him behind, causing Evan to continue building the Ark alone. Meanwhile, God disguises himself as a waiter in a restaurant and later speaks to Joan. 
and he assures Joan that she should see this as an opportunity for the entire family to get closer to each other. Joan is inspired and finally returns to help Evan finish building the ark together to prepare for the flood. On September 22nd, Evan Street staffers show him evidence that Long had planned to build Prestige Crest after damming off a nearby water source, but Long had cut many corners in building the dam. They suspect Long would do the same with the public land act bill. With the ark finally complete, the animals board two by two, the police ran to destroy it with a wrecking ball as it violates land codes and rain falls. I'm going to the ending now, so if you haven't seen this movie, I advise you to fast forward to the time below once I'm doing five seconds, okay? But if you've seen the movie, then continue. Here we go. <coughs> okay, you've been warned. Evan realizes that the flood will be a result of Long's Dam falling and warns the onlookers to get aboard the Ark. The dam indeed fails. Destroying all the homes in Prestige Crest, the Ark rides the flood down the streets of Washington, D.C. and comes to a halt in front of the Capitol, interrupting the vote for the Public Land Act bill. The flood results in Evan accusing Long of being responsible for cost-cutting Lee to the dam's failure, leading to several other members of Congress becoming displeased with Long. The voting of the Public Land Act bill was suspended pending an investigation on Long for profiteering, and all the animals return to their natural habitats. Evan is reinstated to Congress after the flood. With his appearance restored to normal, Evan re-encounters God during a family hike. God states that Evan had changed his world as he prayed for and being closer to his family through his one act of random kindness, or should I say it, art. In the story. So what did I think of Evan Almay? Well, I will say I like it for obvious reasons. This is sort of a guilty pleasure of mine. Anyway, now... Again, as I said, this film didn't do too well, but it still did okay, but not great, though. It was well hyped, especially with churchgoers, and had doubled the budget of its predecessor, but it performed under expectations. It opened over 5,000 screens in, th in 3,500 theaters, and earned $31 million on its first two days, and the film earned $11 million, followed by $8 million on Sunday. The opening was half Less than half of the first film's 68 million weekend, count, which of course was 85 million, counting Memorial Day. Well, the president of distribution for Universal at the time declared, we never expected it to be much higher. It is not unusual for family films to open at a level like this and build. This film will have legs. The film managed to remain at the third spot at the box office in its second week before dropping the fifth place in its third week. Yes, unlike its predecessor, this film got a PG rating and not a PG-13 rating like Bruce Almighty did, so this was more family friendly. Now, internationally, it did well in Russia and Ukraine, and what have you. The film did, however, manage to make it to 100 million in the U.S., and 72 million overseas. So the film so overall the film went on to make 173 million worldwide. And according to Box Office Mojo, the film is the second highest grossing film in the category Supernatural Comedies with Religious Elements, directly behind its predecessor. Now the film's gotten this big time, and it currently sits at 24% big time Ryan on Ryan Tomatoes. And they stay big on special effects, but short on laughs. The film underutilizes a star studded cast that includes Corel and Freeman. Well, this may be true, but I still liked it for what it had to offer. It had pre it had some pretty fun moments and what have you. Now
Now, Richard Roper commended Jim Carrey for declining to reprise his role in this, which he, along with the prequel Dumb and Dumberer and Son of the Mask, as three of the worst sequels of all time, while Dumb and Dumberer was more of a prequel. He continued, Evan All Might is a paper-thin alleged comedy with a laugh drought of biblical proportions and a condens condensingly simplistic spiritual message. Peter Travers of Rolling Stone wasn't thrilled either. Seamlessly juvenile, pseudo-religious, mock sincere, and not that funny. But however, he praised Carell, who projects the movie's only sense of mischief. But it's too little and too late. Oh well. It also it got nominated for three Teen Choice Awards, but didn't win anything. Same thing with the Razzies for worst prequel sequel, but it didn't win that either. But hey, I'm understandable with everyone's opinion, what have you. I mean, we're all entitled to our own opinions, uh, as I've said before. But you all be you be the judge. So anyway. <coughs> Sorry, I'm still a little under the weather. Nevertheless, the film still proved to be an, a little bit of an underrated film, but I really liked it all my for what it had to offer. They brought back John Dabney, who did the score for its predecessor to this one, which that was good. I did like um um, the flood scene, and, well, some of the CGI for the numerous animals of the film, that wasn't too bad. Now, as for our cast, Steve Carell, great as Evan. Morgan Freeman as God again, very good. Lauren Graham, who most people know her best from TV's Gilmore Girls, played Joan. She was very good. Now, as, um, Evan and Joan's sons, we have Johnny Simmons, Playing Dylan, the oldest, Graham Phillips is Jordan, the middle son, and Jimmy Bennett as the youngest one, Ryan. <coughs> yeah, they were they weren't too bad. They were good. John Michael Higgins plays Evans Chief of Staff, Mari Stringer. It was pretty good. One of Sykes played Rhea Daniels, Evans Executive Assistant. Oh, and I forgot, Jonah Hill's in this as well, as Eugene Tannenbaum. One of Evans three staffers. And John Goodman played Congressman Chuck Long. Yeah. Boy. Now, this wouldn't have been the first time I'd seen Goodman play the bad guy and what have you. But he did pretty good, though. We even have Molly Shannon as Evans' real estate agent, who goes by the name of Eve Adams. Hmm. There's others. There's a host of others in here, playing Ed Helms. Harvey Presnell, John Stewart, who has a cameo appearance as himself. Incredible. So anyway, so the cast isn't too bad a year, but like I said, you don't have to take my word for it. You be the judge and what have you. So anyway, I still like that and all money for what I had to offer. Sure, it might not be as memorable as Bruce Almighty, but nevertheless, it's perfect. I think it's fine and a little fun for the whole family to enjoy. But would I recommend it? Well, I'd say just to be on the safe side, give it a one-time watch. If you're not satisfied with it, then just stick with Bruce Almighty. <laughs> but anyway, but if you like it after your first time watch, awesome. So what did you think of Evan Almighty? Let me know what you thought about in the comment section below. If you like this video, click the like button, subscribe, and be a part of the Big D Nation. Now, though I was saving this for the end of the month, I decided I want to give you all an announcement. I am going to do a video tomorrow, in which was going to be my last video of the month, but since I've got a Q&A confirmed, I am going to push it up. So next time you will get my review of the Aladdin Live Action Remake, which I decided to do just one before Little Mermaid comes out, okay? So, if you like this, you may want to consider check out my reviews for these other films. Check, first off, check out my review of 
Bruce Almighty in the upper left-hand corner. The upper right-hand corner is my recent review of the 1980 sequel, Oh God, Book 2. Or, if you haven't already, go to the bottom left-hand corner and take part of my Q&A. Uh, if you would, well, well, and leave some questions for my Q&A if you haven't already. Which, that will be coming up in one week. And the bottom right hand corner is the button you can click to subscribe if you like rankings and reviews on movies, TV, music, video games, etc. Then I'm your guy. Thank you for watching. Until next time, I'm the Big D saying, see ya.